It may have been a holiday weekend, but it was anything but quiet at the White House. New revelations about President Trump and the Russians, Jared Kushner's contact with them, including a top banker. Then we take a look at America's place in the world in the age of Trump. Our European allies, to put it politely, are upset, and they're looking elsewhere for leadership. We're going to debate how bad this thing could get. Also, the political climate is getting worse and worse, and it's not happening in a vacuum, and it's happening just about everywhere you look. It's not a good look for America. We'll explain. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Tuesday evening. Well, President Trump, he's home from his first overseas trip as president. He visited Saudi Arabia, Israel, Belgium, Italy, and Vatican City. But now that he is at home, all anyone can talk about is a place he didn't stop, which is Russia. Well, I should say that's what almost everyone is talking about today. Everyone but the White House, as Sean Spicer, passed on every single chance, and there was more than a few of them, to comment today. And there was a ton to comment on with new bombshell revelations over the holiday weekend, causing more Russia problems for this White House on two separate fronts. For the latest on both Trump and Russia, and there's a lot to digest here. We turn to senior political correspondent Andrew Whitman. Welcome back from vacation. More Russia for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, and a war and peace to yeah. go through here, if you'll bear with me. We begin with the latest Trump confidant now under investigation in the Russia mess as the investigation enters the White House and even the president's innermost circle. On Friday, the Washington Post reporting that Jared Kushner, senior advisor to the president and, of course, the president's son-in-law, was not only the focus of a widening part of the Russia investigation, but that he wanted ways to touch base with Moscow without American intelligence knowing. There's also another contact with a well-placed Russian that Kushner failed to disclose as he entered the White House. According to the report, quote, Jared Kushner and Russia's ambassador to Washington discussed the possibility of setting up a secret and secure communications channel between Trump's transition team and the Kremlin using Russian diplomatic facilities in an apparent move to shield their pre-inauguration discussions from monitoring, according to the U.S. officials briefed on intelligence reports. And for anyone thinking that this might be fake news here, the Post sat on this story since December. That's when they first learned about it, just after the meeting happened at Trump Tower, until they could confirm it last week. Kushner's attorney denied the story, saying Kushner couldn't remember the details of all the calls he made during the transition. The White House called the contacts a one-time thing, saying they were appropriate and even helpful. At least that's what they said this weekend. Back in February, the White House said the meeting was aimed at opening lines of communication with Moscow for the future. Moscow had yet another explanation, that the meeting was just about real estate, nothing more. Yet none of those explanations seems to match one another. Critics are now calling for Kushner's security clearance to be pulled. Kushner is the only current White House official that we know who is under investigation in the Russia inquiry. And this comes amid word of strain between Trump and Kushner. Trump reportedly livid that Kushner's sister offered visas to their prospective real estate clients in China. He's also upset with Kushner's infighting with Steve Bannon, though Trump issued a statement Sunday night supporting Kushner. But Kushner is not the only member of Trump's inner circle who became part of the Russia investigation in recent days. Both the House and Senate Intelligence Committees have sent requests to Michael Cohen, Trump's personal attorney, for information on Russian contacts and all communications within the campaign related to Russia. Cohen, whose name popped up on that British dossier, the one about the, the one with the golden story about Trump's interest in certain bedroom liquids, he has denied any involvement and is refusing to comply with the committees. Subpoenas are the next likely step. So adding Kushner and Cohen to this list of Trump's Russia contacts and connections, and we're looking at six Trump team members now facing some tough questions. Mike Flynn, the fired national security advisor, former campaign chairman Paul Manafort, Kushner, the only one on this list in the White House right now, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who didn't disclose his Russia meetings and recused himself from the investigation, Carter Page, and now Michael Cohen. One more quick note on that Kushner meeting seeking back-channel contacts to Moscow. That meeting was with the head of a Russian government-owned development bank known here as VEB, which means one of the board's bank members is a man named Vladimir Putin. Oh, and the bank also is under U.S. sanctions, sanctions that were imposed after Russia took over Crimea and began a proxy war in eastern Ukraine. So any business conversation that Kushner engaged in may well have violated sanctions and, by extension, U.S. law. And the Kushner story is only one of the bombshells to hit the White House this weekend. The other, CNN's report that Russian officials talked about having derogatory information about Trump during the campaign. Info they thought they could use to exert influence to get what they wanted from a Trump administration. 
Quoting that report, quote, one source described the information as financial in nature and said the discussion centered on whether the Russians had leverage over Trump's inner circle. The source said the intercepted communications suggested to U.S. intelligence that Russians believed they had the ability and to, to influence the administration through that derogatory information. But the sources, privy to the descriptions of the communications written by U.S. intelligence, cautioned the Russian claims to one another could have been exaggerated or even made up as part of a disinformation campaign that the Russians did during the election. As for the White House's response, it was unusual. One, because at no point did they try to knock down the idea that the Russians had any influence on Trump. And two, because the document that the White House turned to for proof of their claims didn't provide any. From a White House spokesperson, quote, the reality is the review of the president's income from the last 10 years showed he had virtually no financial ties to Russia at all. But that review was written by Trump's own attorneys. Trump touted that letter, noting it was certified, but it being certified doesn't make it true. And of course, Trump refuses to share his tax return, so they're asking us to basically take their word for it. So two major bombshell reports, but the hangover from earlier Russia-related problems could lead to even more headaches for the White House and soon. Last week, Michael Flynn said he would not comply with congressional subpoenas to turn over documents and other information about Russia, claiming his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. A federal grand jury has also subpoenaed documents from Flynn. If he continues to refuse, Congress could vote to hold him in contempt. And then there's former FBI Director James Comey. We know about one memo he wrote claiming Trump asked him to back off the Flynn investigation. But there are other memos out there. One reportedly has Chief of Staff Wrights Priebus worried. One counselor for another intelligence agent agency, a man who knows Comey, claims the memos are a, quote, time bomb for the administration. But it's not clear when or if Comey will testify publicly. Rich? All right, Andrew, a lot to chew over there. Let's bring in our panel to help us with that. Jeannie Zeno, professor of political science at Iona College, also senior advisor at the consulting firm Applied Techonomics. Dominic Carter join us, political journalist and author, of course, and John Carlo Parasuti, former aide to President George H.W. Bush. And you met, of course, Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. All right. I don't even know where to start in terms of all the troubles. John Carlo, they're trying to have a new mes messaging team, I guess. Uh, they're figuring out who's out, who's in. It's like I always say, Game of Thrones. But if you go over the various moving parts here, to me, the one thing they all have in common is different players with different agendas, a lot of it to do with personal enrichment here. But yet you've got the adults from the Comeys to the Mullers to the rest that are just adding this thing up, figuring out where they're going to go next. They can't make this thing go away at this point. Um, while we don't know what the there there is, it sure doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And this White House has not helped itself because there is nobody <laughs> seemingly in charge of communication and of, and of telling the message and of, of getting the story and at least the Trump point of view out there. There are, believe it or not, plausible explanations for all of the allegations that, uh, that Andrew read through that were so long I got to go out and get a cup of coffee before I came back and you were still going through them, right? Um, but there are. I mean, I, you know, one report I read said that this so-called secretive back channel was set up because the incoming administration didn't trust its predecessor and thought that maybe they would still have the means to listen in on any sort of a dialogue that uh, the new Trump administration might have with the Russians. That's paranoid, perhaps, but it's not criminal. Point being, there are explanations for all of these things, but this administration has not helped itself because it cannot uh, and it will not communicate a clear message on, on what they're up to. And to me, that's, that's analogous to this presidency as a whole. You know, if I was the administration, Dominic, and more importantly, if you're the president right now, and reportedly, this is all third hand, who knows if it's true, but he's become increasingly isolated in there. He doesn't know who to trust. As we mentioned, as Andrew touched on, you've got Barron and uh, Bannon and Kushner at each other's throats here. You've got Priebus who's worried about what could happen. You've got the communication team one foot on a banana peel. Um, you've got all of these various factions with all the various agendas. Then you've got the Manaforts and the Flynn's and the rest that are hanging out there. You don't know what they did or didn't say, you know, what level of investigation they're in, what they're looking at for their own hides. But to me, yes, Comey. Apparently, there's four memos. We've only heard about one of them, and the other three are as, if not more, damning than the idea to make this go away, take care of Flynn, okay, which obviously he wouldn't go along to get along. But to me, it's three letters, and he mentioned them. It's KEB. If you look with the Toronto Hotel and some of the other properties, why money is coming in to keep these struggling things afloat, 
Who saved the casinos in AC when they were going under? The one common thing is there's Russian money. This bank was sanctioned because it was laundering money for Russian mobs, etc. It don't smell good. And I think, and I've been saying this for a year now, the math just never made sense to me. And why, for no political purpose, when he's a political animal who looks out for number one at all things, why has he stuck his neck out for no political, logical reason for the Russians to this point? I think we're going to follow the money trail, and I think at the end of the day, this bank, among others, but this bank in particular, if they do the financial forensics, somehow, some way, it's going to make a loop. I don't know how it ends, but I just don't think it ends well. Richard, I think everybody at this table knows how this is probably going to end. I'm not going to state it right now. You already know what I think the road that the country is about to go down. Unfortunately, I think that Americans have become accustomed to, with this particular president, it's, it's so bad in terms of the Russia strings and connections. It's like Americans have become accustomed to when is the next shoe going to drop? So the president left the country. That was a good thing for him. And then, of course, as I said, Europe would be a strong test. And, of course, he offended. I know we're going to talk about that a little later. He offended those folks. But it, it's a situation as it relates to Russia of, you know, you mentioned, and you're right, you're, you're an expert of communications. But this president, how can you have a message when this guy is John Wayne, the president, shooting from the hip on any given day, and if you're the communications director or the press secretary, he conveniently blames you. We already know how he gets down in private. He blames you for his message not getting across, but the message could change at any given moment. This is not going to end well. It's as simple as that. And Gina, what scares me the most is, forget that this is all self-inflicted. At a certain point, North Korea, it's going to come to a head. One way or the other, we're going to have to make a decision. And if this administration decides to take preemptory action in any way, shape, or form, maybe it's even the right foreign policy to take here, a military policy. Everybody, including yours truly, is going to question the motivations that are attached to it. And that's what worries me the most. He's screwed up 130 days here all on his own. Imagine when he's tested as every president has and will be tested by international incidents. And we're going to be left wondering, why is he doing it? What's the other agenda? What about the Russia card here? Is he checking first with Moscow before he's doing certain actions? And you're not paranoid anymore to ask these questions. You know, and this is not going to get resolved shortly. Mueller's going to take, forget about months, it could be a better part of a year before we get to the bottom of this. That's the part that I resent as an American, this limbo that we're caught in right now. Yeah, and to add to that, I mean, I think we should all be frightened because you have a 36-year-old son-in-law with absolutely no background in foreign or domestic policy of any kind who was, by the admission of his own high school, not a great student, gets into Harvard because his father gives $2.5 million to Harvard, goes there, and now is basically in charge of almost every aspect of our foreign and many aspects of our domestic and policy. And at one point, this D weekend we have reporting, Jeannie, and I didn't realize is we all make fun that Trump only wants to see things, no words, he just wants PowerPoints and he wants to have color pictures. Apparently Kushner, Bannon calls him air because he floats in and out and there's no there there, there's no substance. Forget that he's the son-in-law. You have nobody doing their homework here. That's yeah. Beyond petrifying. I got a call today from a journalist in Mexico wanting to know what was going to happen because their only inroads into the White House now in terms of moving the negotiations on NAFTA is guess who? Jared Kushner, who has a relationship with their foreign minister. That is very scary stuff because Jared Kushner has absolutely no knowledge and no background in policy, trade policy, let alone NAFTA, and that's your biggest inroads. And if this relationship with his father-in-law collapses, as it might, what happens to all these issues that have gone unaddressed, whether it's infrastructure, health care, immigration, you NAFTA, keep waiting, trade? To your point, for the, for the adults to emerge in the room, and Andrew, we don't know the date. We don't even know if we will. We expected that Comey may have testified this week. We know that's not going to happen. Do you think, I know I was talking to uh, Mueller here, do you think at the end of the day we hear Comey testify? I think only if Mueller determines that it won't interfere in his investigation and that they won't somehow cross themselves up. This has happened in the past where Congress has granted immunity in cases to get them to testify, and then all of a sudden they can't be prosecuted outside of Congress. So if Mueller gives the, 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 the thumbs up, then, then I'll go for it. By the way, the X factor in all of this with Trump and Russia, 
the lack of disclosure about Trump's finances. The fact that he hasn't, re if he was really innocent and just wanted to show it, he would re release all of his tax returns, release all of his financial information, let everybody comb through it and find all the details that there's no there there. But because he refuses to do that, that's the basis of all of these questions going forward. And Mueller could. He could subpoena those financial records. He could, records. but they might not go public. And just one last thing, I know we're going to hit a break. When we're talking about this, and yes, two-thirds of America, I don't know where the other third is, they rightfully understand that Russia is foe, not friend. Everyone agrees they intentionally tried to manipulate our elections. They did that to us. And we're still having these conversations about how compromised potentially our president may or may not be with, in effect, a foreign state that is an enemy to American interests. Just chew on that. All right, coming back on the other side of the break. What is America's role in the world? Dominic touched on it. The question is, who are our friends? I already told you, Russia ain't one of them. After the president's trip to Europe, many of our allies, they're asking that very question, as are so many Americans. <laughs>